Most Reverend Dr. Chinnapathini Bhagaya, Most Reverend Dr. Galibali, Sister Reverend Sister Innamma Yerva, and Sister Teresa KVM, Reverend Fathers, Reverend Sisters, Doctors, Special Invitees, Staff, and Students of St. Joseph's. Now let us enter into this Holy Mass with the sentiments of great joy and gratitude. Amen. It is to welcome all of you to the banquet table of the Lamb. Here on this table this morning, Jesus will speak his word to us and then feed us with his body and blood. So God's people, I welcome all of you to the banquet table of the Lamb in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And so as we come to sit at table with the Lord, let us recognize our own unworthiness. Let us recognize our own state as we come to sit at table with the Lord, especially what John, in his first letter, chapter 3, says. John says that if our consciences and our hearts accuse us of nothing, then we are confident that when we pray, God listens to us. When our hearts and our consciences accuse us of nothing, 
then we are confident that when we pray, God listens to us. So as we come to pray this morning, let us go into our minds and our hearts and search our minds and hearts and whatever our minds and hearts accuse us of, let us with humility ask God for pardon and for forgiveness. My brothers and sisters, we pray for the cleansing of the Lord as we pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. So may the Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us all our sins. And may he enable us to forgive one another. And may he bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. To show the value of human suffering, listen in kindness to our prayers for our brothers and sisters who are sick. Grant that all who are oppressed by pain, by distress or other afflictions may know that they are chosen among those proclaimed blessed and are united to Christ in his suffering for the salvation of the world. We ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and God, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. First reading, taken from the book of Jeremiah, Chapter 33, verses 6 to 9. But now I will bring health and healing to the city. I will heal them and let them enjoy lasting peace and security. I will bring back the captives of Judah and Israel and rebuild them as they were before. I will cleanse them from the guilt of their sin against me and I will forgive all the guilt of their sin of rebellion against me. Sarima, 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 Sarima,
reading from the acts of the apostles chapter 3 verses from 1 to 9 one day peter and john were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and a man lame from birth was being carried in people would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the beautiful gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple when he saw peter and john about to go into the temple he asked them for alms peter looked intently at him as did john and said look at us and he fixed his attention on them expecting to receive something from them but peter said i have no silver or gold but what i have i give you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth stand up and walk and he took him by the right hand and raised him up and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong jumping up he stood and began to walk and he entered the temple with them walking and leaping and praising god all the people saw him walking and praising god the word of the lord thanks, thanks be to god neevo kini na paravulathu deepamu na throvathu velugai ennadi gospel according to saint luke glory to you o lord as jesus approached jericho a blind man was sitting by the road side begging when he heard a crowd going by he asked what was happening they told him jesus of nazareth is passing by then he shouted jesus son of david have mercy on me those who were in front sternly ordered him to be quiet but he shouted even more loudly son of david have mercy on me jesus stood still and ordered the man to be brought to him and when he came near he asked him what do you want me to do for you 
he said lord let me see again jesus said to him receive your sight your faith has saved you immediately he regained his sight and followed him glorifying god and all the people when they saw it praised god the gospel of the lord Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. For the past four days, I and a small delegation from the Vatican, we've been here in India. We started in Calcutta or Kolkata uh, to celebrate what we do in the church every two years is the celebration of the World Day of the Sick. So we started last Saturday, we continued on Sunday, and concluded it then. And by extension, we hear in another place of ministry of the sick, and it is to pray to commission this facility for health care and to commend not only the building and the services here, but the people who would be administering health care in these facilities to God for his blessing and for his guidance and support. To do this, to dedicate this building and to so commend it to God for his guidance, for blessing, guidance, and support for the Ministry of Health Care. The sisters, this time it wasn't the Office of Liturgy, but the sisters chose three readings to celebrate this occasion. And all the three readings are about healing. The first reading we listen to from Jeremiah talks about God who will be healing the people of Israel, his own people. And after God has healed his people, the people of Israel, God's people living in Jerusalem, because of their healing, they would attract people from all around the world to recognize and give praise to God for the healing of his people. So the healing of God's people becomes the occasion for outsiders to recognize God and to believe in him and praise him. But the person who explains this best for us is the disciple of Jeremiah called Baruch. In the letter of Baruch, the third chapter, verses 9, Baruch asks the people of Israel in exile in Babylon, God's people, why are you in the land of your enemy? Why are you sick and dying in a foreign land? Why are you being buried among strangers? And then Baruch himself gives an answer. It is because you did not listen to the word of God. And then from there, Baruch goes on to promise the people languishing in exile God's own forgiveness and strength. This is the forgiveness that Jeremiah talks about. God will come back to his people. He will heal them of all their illnesses and support. But most importantly, he will heal their heart so that they now learn to listen to God's voice. And when God does this to his people, it will become a sign for people outside to recognize that God is in the midst of his people. So the healing of God's people has some, these days, these days the expression you would use is that it has an evangelizing effect. It announces God's goodness to those around. Then we listen to the second reading from the Acts of the Apostles. This is after the Pentecost. Jesus, Peter, and John were going to the temple to pray. And this 
was also before the Jews threw out the disciples of Jesus outside the temple. And as we told again, there is another story of healing. There was a lame man sitting in front of the temple begging. And when he saw Peter and John, he begged them for help, for some gift. Then Peter answers in a very curious way. I don't have gold, I don't have silver, but I have something else. And what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, get up and walk. And the man gets up and begins to walk. And again, this act of healing draws praise from people around and they all glorify God who has given such power to men. The third one, the sisters were not happy with two healing stories. They wanted to make it complete, and so they added the third one. And the third one was by Jesus himself. Jesus was on his way towards Jerusalem, and he had to go through Jericho. Jericho is a little bit in the lowland, and from Jericho you begin to walk up towards Jerusalem. And as they entered Jericho, and with all the crowd following Jesus, there was a little bit of noise. So a blind man asked what was happening. And when he was told that Jesus of Nazareth was passing, he then began. He must have heard something from Jesus about Jesus. He then began, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And of course, not wanting to embarrass Jesus, the followers of Jesus tried to shut the guy down. But the more they tried to shut him down, the more he yelled still more strongly, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus hears it, and then he says, bring him up. And then the guy comes and Jesus, what do you want me to do? And his answer, again, is, Lord, that I may see. This story is told by all the, the, all the Gospels. In the Gospel of Mark, this blind man is given a name, Bartimaeus. In the Gospel of Luke, we don't hear about the name of this man. But it's about a blind man who has to be healed by Jesus and whom Jesus heals. Now, the interesting thing that follows is this. When the blind man gets healed, he doesn't look for his house first to go and show himself to his family. When the blind man is healed, he follows Jesus up to Jerusalem. And this small passage of following Jesus to Jerusalem is again very significant. Again, depending on which gospel you take, in the Gospel of Mark, for example, Jesus has been struggling to get the disciples to understand that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer. And the disciples don't understand. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus tells us that Mark tells us the people, the disciples did not understand because they were discussing among themselves who was the greatest among them. So something prevented the disciples from really understanding what Jesus was trying to teach them. And so in the Gospel of Mark, the healing of Bartimaeus or this blind man becomes also a healing for the disciples. So this episode is not simply a miracle, it's also a parable. It's a parable in the sense that sometimes we need our eyes of our faith to be healed before we can see Jesus clearly and follow him up to Jerusalem for his passion. And it is telling us that Sometimes there are things which blind us and make it difficult for us to follow Jesus all the way to Jerusalem. So with the healing of this blind man, the disciples are also healed. Something is taken from them and enables them to now follow Jesus up with Bartimaeus. So this is a third healing, but this third healing is accompanied by a clear vision of discipleship and how to follow Jesus to Jerusalem. So, dear sisters, I don't know what you were thinking when you asked me to come and talk about this, but I know that this is about lunchtime. 
We don't want to keep you here for long. I could keep you here till 6 o'clock with this passage. Uh, we don't want to go further. All I want to tell you is just two things. Two things I just want to say. In all the readings we've listened to, it is God who heals. It is God who exercises his power of healing and heals people of their sickness, ailment, and whatever upsets them and keeps them away from the Lord. It is God who heals. But gradually, Father Jostrom, whom I came with, said that on Tuesday, all of you here in uh, Guntur, all of you know Hebrew, understand Hebrew. So every Tuesday, the people of Kuntu, you all speak Hebrew. It's simply to say that in the Old Testament, like in Jeremiah and Isaiah, God who heals is called Rophe. Rophe is a doctor, a healer. Now, gradually, God makes his healing experience and power and name and gives it to an individual. So you know about the archangel Raphael. Raphael means God heals. God is a healer. So for the first time, God has made his uh, power of healing a name for an individual. So the angel Raphael now bears the name of God who heals. So it's not only God who heals, but he's given this whole activity as a name to an individual. And this is significant. It means that God can make his healing activity a name for people, beginning with Raphael. When Jesus comes, and he also exercises the same power of healing, he gives this power now to his disciples. And when he sends the disciples, he gives them the authority to heal and even to raise up the dead. The disciples of Jesus have become Raphael. In the disciples of Jesus, God himself heals. So the healing power of God is now being given to people. The disciples of Jesus to begin with and from them to other people. So I want to draw attention to this because this is something that God has done for us. God has given his healing activity in the hands of human beings. So that when God healed the dumb and the deaf, the dumb and the deaf man, the people praise God and they praise God that he has given this power to human beings. So now human beings can heal. They can heal in the name of God. Therefore, when sisters doctors, others begin to exercise a healing ministry, they celebrate already what God has made possible for human beings to do. God has entrusted into the hands of human beings his power of healing. So it's not only one archangel who is called Raphael. Now all Christians in the name of Jesus become Raphael. They all have exercised the healing power of God. And I want to draw attention to this, sisters, because in this place that we are dedicating today, you are going to be exercising healing, either by touching, by bringing consolation, by bringing solace, or by bringing comment or whatever to people, you will be dispensing the healing authority of Christ himself. And this is possible because God has decided and God has willed to entrust his healing activity in the hands of people, beginning with Raphael and in Jesus with his disciples. So that makes all believers in the name of Jesus able to exercise the healing power of Christ to other sick and frail people. So here in this structure, you will be exercising this healing power which God has entrusted to the hands of human beings. Once it was Raphael, but in Jesus is all of us. As many as are baptized in the name of Jesus, and when Jesus sends us, he sends out 
with the healing authority so they can touch and heal. That is what you want to exercise here. But just as, the second point, just as in the case of Jeremiah, in the case of Peter and John, and in the case of Jesus himself, whenever this healing power and activity of God is dispensed, people are led to praise God for what he has done. It also means that in your exercise of healing activity in this structure, it should lead people to see the God who has given this power into your hands. So it should lead people to recognize the greatness of God and praise God for having given this power in your hands. So your ministry here is not just you. Your ministry here is not just you, you using your skills. Your ministry here is to witness to God's power placed in the hands of people so that people experiencing this can thank God who has placed this power and this ministry in your hands. So in your case also, your activity here must be evangelizing. It must be telling people about God who has made this power possible in your hands. So as we continue this celebration, we'll celebrate the Eucharist. And after that, we shall commission this building, bless it, and blessing the building, bless all who in these buildings and also right across the street or who in these two structures will be dispensing the healing ministry of the Lord. And our prayer is that whenever the doctors and the nurses in these two structures dispense the healing ministry of God, people's eyes will be raised to recognize the God who makes all of this possible. So we'll continue our celebration thanking God for having bestowed this ministry in the hands of human beings like us like you sisters, like the doctors, and like all who will serve poor people and sick people here. In Calcutta, we visited three of the houses run by the sisters of Mother Teresa, so sisters of charity, they call them. And it was human beings like you also dispensing the same healing authority and power. And in all of these, it is people recognizing that God has made something possible and accessible to them through the hands of other human beings. So today, we all want to thank God that he has given this power in the hands of human beings. In the hands of you sisters, in the hands of the doctors and nurses who will stay here, in the hands of doctors and sisters and nurses all over the world. We want to thank God that he has given this power of healing in the hands of human beings. And so thanking God, want to also then commend everything that has been sent to his hand and ask him to inspire, to direct, to console, and to strengthen all who exercise this power of healing in these structures. May God bless you for this vision. May he strengthen you and may you inspire and guide your exercise of healing ministry in this building. Amen. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into death. On the third day he was risen. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of God. He is Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, we, your beloved children, are going to put forward our petitions to you on the occasion of the inauguration of the OPD block. Listen to our prayers with kindness and answer all our needs. Almighty and eternal God, we pray for the church and the ecclesial communities. Bless our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Cardinal Peter Tuxon, and all the cardinals, the bishops, priests, and religious. Grant us the grace 
to open our hearts to the word of Christ. Thus, all of us may together build the church by loving and witnessing through our way of life and commitment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, listen to your people praying. Send your love, send your power, send your grace. God of wisdom and justice, through you, authority is rightly administered, laws are enacted, and judgment is decreed. We ask your mercy upon our country, India, and its people. May they work to preserve peace and justice, and thus promote liberty and equality. We pray to the Lord. Lord, listen to your people praying. Send your love, send your power, send your grace. O Father of infinite goodness, we pray for our congregation of Jesus, Mary, Joseph. Bless our leaders whom you have chosen. Assist them with your spirit of counsel, fortitude, and empower them with your grace and wisdom to guide the members. Strengthened in unity, may all of us work with renewed commitment and missionary zeal and respond to the newly cha new challenges in the context of the contemporary church and world while remaining faithful to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, listen to your people praying. Send your love, send your power, send your grace. Merciful Father, with faith and trust in you, we have brought all our spiritual and bodily needs to you. Look graciously upon all of us and grant us what we have asked. We ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit and our one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Sweet 
Let us now pray together, my brothers and sisters, that my and your offering may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Since the moments of our life unfold, O oh God, according to your good pleasure, receive the prayers and the sacrificial offerings by which we implore your mercy for our brothers and sisters who are sick, that having been anxious for them in their danger, we may rejoice at their recovery of health through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is true, right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled all our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to the Father, he has unlocked for us the gates of heaven. And so with a company of angels and saints in heaven, we praise you for always as together we claim we on your praise. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. For all, on the night he was betrayed, and he himself, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, he gave the time, said a blessing, and giving to his disciples, said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, it will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come, until you come, until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make, us, make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs, Saint Joseph, and with all the saints on true constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis of Pope, our Cardinal Peter Turkson and all the bishops, the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you as they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Joyfully now let us pray together to God our Father in the words that Jesus has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our faith, but on the faith of your church, 
and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the living and healing Jesus be always with you. And with your spirit. And in his strength, let us offer to each other a sign of our peace and love. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. and sisters, Jesus, Jesus, our healer, he who takes away the sins and the infirmities of humanity, and happy are all who are invited to his saving meal. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say the word, the word so and my and soul, soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. is ended. Let us go forth in the peace and the love of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Your Eminence, Cardinal Peter Kosh of Pietrasen, Prefect of the Dicastery for the Promotion of Integral Human Development, Vatican Rome. Your Excellency, Most Reverend Chinnabhatni Bhagaya, Bishop of Guntu. Your Excellency, Most Reverend Galibali, Apostolic Administrator of the Diocese of Kadapa and Bishop Amrithus of Guntu. Sri Kona Sasida, IAS, District Magistrate and Collector, Guntu. Sri C.H. Vijay Rao, IPS, Superintendent of Police, Guntu Rabban. Sri Sri Keshlatka, IAS, Municipal Commissioner, Guntu. Sri Dr. Ratnababu, Orthopedic Surgeon, St. Joseph General Hospital. Reverend Sister Eruva Innamma, Congregational Animator, JMJ, Italy. Reverend Sister Teresa KVM, Province Animator, Guntur, Andhra Pradesh. Reverend Sister Cletus Desi, Director, St. Joseph General Hospital, Guntur. Reverend Sister Dr. Annie P.A., Medical Director, St. Joseph General Hospital, Guntur. The Galaxy of Intellectuals, Distinguished Guests, Doctors, Fathers, Sisters, Staff and Students, Media personnel and their brothers and sisters. Bon arrive. Welcome. Bon arrive. Welcome. Hasito mo sakamayo, tamaso mo juti kamayo, mrtyo mo amrtang kamayo. Hasito mo sakamayo, tamaso mo juti kamayo, mrtyo mo amrtang. Asato ma sakamaya, tamaso ma juti kamaya, mrityo na amritang kamaya. Dear friends, now I turn my gaze to the historic event of the day. Where are we now? Yeah, in the holy portals of Dr. Sister Mary Glauri's OPD blog, 
fully immersed in the heavenly mood of celebration, overwhelmed and spellbound, looking at the grand edifice, realized through the dashing intermediation of Sister Cletus, and of course, very well supported by Sister Teresa and Council, and firmly crossing the sands of time, making a majestic journey, turning a humble temple of healing service into a saga of splendid achievement. Indeed, it is worthy of congratulation and admiration. We need to blow the trumpet very loudly, proclaiming the greatness of the Almighty for his inner movements of his spirit and tell the nations the glorious deeds the Lord has done in the life of this hospital from its inception. Our warmest congratulations to Sister Teresa and Council, Sister Cletus, and the whole driving force of the JMJ fraternity present here, and all the collaborators of the hospital, and all the sisters of Guntur province in particular, and all those who have labored behind the beautiful edifice. This is indeed a crowning glory to JMJ congregation and a rich tribute paid to Dr. Mary Glowry, a charismatic visionary and a valiant woman who 99 years ago left the lucrative profession in the Collins Street of Australia, not known to anyone but God alone, set her feet on the soil of Guntur, India as a frail grain of wheat dreaming a golden harvest with a far-sighted vision. She trod on this land unremittingly for 37 long years, serving the Lord through her compassionate services to the suffering humanity in a variety of ways, with firm belief that in Him we can do all things. She toiled day and night in obedience to God's will, in a small room with the three medicines, with untrained staff, drenched in sweat during the scorching heat of summer for the people of India whom she loved so much. And today we are very happy that we have amidst us our dear and revered Australian delegation to witness to this beautiful ceremony. Please give them a round of applause. Yeah, Certainly a nostalgic emotion runs through our mind and heart filling us with ecstatic joy and jocund jubilation, recalling to our memory how she committed herself to save millions of souls through self-renunciation and sacrifice. Her inner dynamism, unshakable trust and confidence in the promise of the Lord, her Grand Master, undaunted spirit, universal gift of vision, propelled her to be successful on many endeavors. I need not explain, but very specially, the establishment of St. John's Medical College in Chai bear witness to her brilliant idea and an incredible, incredible initiative. Whatever she thought, said and did became a history, a rich legacy for all of us to emulate. Many a time she wished that if I could multiply a thousand times, despite day and night work, she found time to give way to her versatile mind writing poems, songs, articles, etc. with an overflowing spiritual joy. In humility, she used to say, I am first a religious, then a doctor. All in all, we can say that Dr. Mary Glory is a stalwart, a perfect role model for us who dared to be different, following her heart and her instruction of the conscience rather than the command of the crowd. Therefore, the progress of this hospital is achieved face by face, step by step, stage by stage over the last 99 years of existence, of course, as per 115 years of this uh, ground. Now that a great dream is realized, it is our duty to imbibe the spirit of Dr. Mary Glory, the spirit of the servant of God, walk in her steps and like that of her successors, Dr. Gladys Lobo, Dr. Rosi, Rosa Basani, and live the heritage of compassionate love, holding high the torch of love, mercy, and kindness. May God shower on all of us his rich gifts of beauty, truth, and goodness to renew our commitment and transform this imposing new OPD block into a sacred abode of health and wealth. I wish Sister Cletus and the hospital staff 
to be filled with the double share of Mary Glory's passion to work for the suffering humanity and serve them with full of tenderness, kindness and compassion. May the divine healer fill all of us and very especially the hospital staff with his healing presence that you may do small things with great love. Thank you. Chinna Bhattini Bhagiyagaru, our bishop, he is always available. He comes very often to see the sick, especially the priests, religious, and those who have no one. Whatever may be his intellectual capacities, he never looked. I cannot come out to the bishop's house. He gave his time, and we appreciate his magnanimity. Father Rayana had been explaining about his episodes of achievements in the past. So I do not want this midday to extend time more. Now, I must be failing in my duty. Our Bishop Gali Baligaru, who had been a beacon of light in the Knights of Guntur for many years. He came, he has shown, and he has lived. So, Your Excellency, we are happy that you are here. <clears throat> in spite of the retirement, the Vatican did not spare him. They gave him an additional job task as the administrator of Kadapa Diocese that tells about his capacity, still his vision and mission for the church. I welcome you, our both excellencies, on this gathering. Now, we have our dear sister Innama Eriva, who is the congregational animator. She is a woman of faith. Let this be her degrees, what she has received, what she has received. She is a best teacher that you might have recognized while she was addressing you. She is a good teacher, she is a good administrator. Above all, she has got a heart for the poor. <coughs> now, she was the president of CRI. She was the president of various other organizations in India. Added to all these credits, now she has become the congregational first general animator. So she deserves all approach and we welcome you, dear sister Innama. And our young province animator, dear sister Teresa, she was down to the earth person, to the poor and the needy. She has done her higher studies in psychology and counseling all the day long. She worked with the women and children and she had been a resource person for many seminaries and guiding the women and men and listening to their sorrows and miseries day in and out to help them. But now she has taken a very responsible task of as an administrator of the whole province of Guntur. Now I am sure she will shape our province and bring laurels to each one of us. And through our blessings and her blessings, St. Joseph's will grow. A hearty welcome, dear sister, Teresa. And our Dr. Retna Babu, he doesn't need much introduction in this August gathering because most of our priests, sisters, and the men in Guntur, either they have, he has chiseled many of their bones. He has cut or he has repaired. So that is his art of the study. So, sir, and as an administration, as an administrator, she had been always help to us. Whenever something happens to St. Joseph's, when he sees our faces are not happy, he comes, sister, what is the wrong? Anything troubling you? So he is a very good guide and help to each one of us in our hospital. And he is a disciplinarian. He can't keep quiet when something goes wrong. So thank you, sir. And he, we are proud to say that he had been working in Ghana. Although many of us had been missionaries in Ghana, but he was working as a doctor, as a surgeon in Ghana. That is what we brought him to the diocese today, along with our ex-eminent cardinal. For this occasion, sir, hearty welcome. 
my dear sister Annie, Dr. Annie, when Annie is not there, we know what St. Joseph sees. The men and women flock to her. She, ladies will be waiting, children will be waiting to look at her. So, we always, she has got many children in Guntur. Many women who comes with cry, those who have no children, they go back happily with the kid because of, <coughs> because of Annie's care and concern. So I am happy, but she is more than anything, she's a religious. She's a religious and she believes all the art and the lear learning she has, nothing if she has no blessing of the Almighty. So dear Sister Annie, we are happy that we could welcome at this August gathering and appreciate your generosity 24 hours. I never saw her saying no. She, she never gets tired. A wonderful woman. We are happy and we welcome you. Thank you. God bless all of us. St. Joseph's Hospital is a part of the heritage and history of Guntur city. Every poor person, every family, every downtrodden person remembers that St. Joseph Hospital has touched their lives in a special way, some point or the other. I see so many fathers and sisters. I myself have studied in a missionary school and in Loyola College. Whatever be the denomination, be it JMJ or be it Sisters of Nirmala, be it Don Bosco, Loyola Society of Jesuits, wherever I go, wherever I see a father or a sister, I immediately wish them warmly, good morning sister, good afternoon sister. It's because in each and every sister I see a selfless service rendered by the person. Whatever I am today, in government, thanks to the good value-based education I've got from the sisters and fathers. The missionaries under the Roman Catholic Church have rendered human service in India. One person which we always remember is Mother Teresa. Recently, I am also reminded of Graham and Gladys Staines from Australia who have been doing wonderful service in Orissa. Just to name a few. The list goes on, but the time is short, so I will not name all the people. Now, in spite of government spending, there are critical gaps which are being filled by members of the civil society. And in this civil society, I think the sisters of JMJ stand very tall. I was collector Kadapa, where I was associated with JMJ Educational Society, the kind of education they do, both in health as in and education sector. The JMJ sisters have been doing very good service. I really commend all the sisters and also all the brothers associated with this august institution for the wonderful service being rendered. Today is a very important day. As somebody was telling, the most energetic church leader from Africa is with us today. And he is here to inaugurate a wonderful new OPD block in the name of Sister Mary Glowry. Sister Mary Glowry started this institution in 1924, if I am right. Yeah. Selfless service means not only to one particular community. The note given to me says the first patient was Mr. Mohammed. Irrespective of caste, creed, religion, serving the downtrodden, serving the weakest of the weak is what sisters at St. Joseph have been doing. The day when uh, Sister Desi came to invite me for this function. Uh, I was really overjoyed as well as overwhelmed. The cardinal who was part of the papal conclave is coming to Guntur. And it's a, it's a kind of once in lifetime opportunity for many of us. So that's what I communicated 
if my schedule allows me, I'll surely try and not only try, I'll make it convenient and I'll join in this program. Thanks for inviting me that day. The first reaction from me was the same. And today I'm very happy to have joined here. As Collector Sir had just pointed the humbleness of Cardinal, we could see when he was initially invited on the dais, he was not ready to sit on a chair which is different from others. He just, he was hesitant. So that also shows how humble he is, how he sees everybody as equals. Probably on the dais, I might uh, venture and say this. Amongst all, as though the service to mankind is service to God, what we say, and any religion, any religion is not a barrier to that. Probably I am the only one on the dais who is following some other religion, but we are all at the end following the religion of humankind, following the religion of mankind, which is humanitarian religion. And today, the St. Mary Glory OPD block that is getting opened is again a feather in the cap of the Guntur city. We saw the video which was being played earlier. 1904 small dispensary, 1920 Sister Glory came here. From there onwards, the dedication, the commitment which she with which this hospital went on from milestone to milestone, treating almost 50,000 people in a year. Now the number must be very high. And I am sure the hospital is providing the best of the services to the Guntur citizens as well as the citizens of this area. Once again, my best wishes to all the people who are servicing, who are serving the poor, service, uh, serving the God by servicing to the poor. From Municipal Corporation Guntur also, I can assure the administration of St. Joseph Hospital, whatever is required, whatever is necessary and can be done by the corporation, will extend all possible help, all possible services to this hospital and I hope many such occasions will come where I can participate, I can be a contributory to the growth of this hospital and in the contribution to the cause of the humankind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gathered, gathered around this uh, uh, plaque. Our prayers and blessing on this plaque is simply a way of thanking God for what he enabled sister to do for this hospital. So our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made, who made heaven and earth. earth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. God of love and life. You, in a wonderful way, created human beings and still more wonderfully renewed them with your grace. When they were ill, you were pleased to heal and to restore their health. O Lord, mercifully pour out your blessing and sanctify the outpatient's block, named after your servant and handmaid, Dr. Sister Mary Glory, so that the sick who come here in you may find a physician of body and soul and a compassionate healer. Lord, we pray also for all those who are involved in your healing ministry. May they be the signs of your love and mercy, upholding the human respect and health for everyone, so that all who enter this abode of healing may experience your presence and have life in its fullness. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen.
I congratulate the JMJ management and in a special way, Sister Cletus, the director and administrator of this hospital for undertaking to construct such a beautiful and magnanimous, magnificent block. Sister Cletus has been responsible from the beginning till the end, from planning, raising funds, and to the completion of the building in time on this occasion. I appreciate very deeply the dedicated and the wonderful service rendered by the sisters in this hospital. I would like to mention one thing in particular. There are so many corporate hospitals coming up in Guntur and around Guntur like mushrooms. But there is something very special. In St. Joseph's Hospital, there is a very important, valuable, and powerful equipment that is not present in all the other hospitals. You know what it is? That is the compassionate heart of those who are working here. That is the most fundamental necessary equipment to treat the patients, chiefly the poor and the suffering. Mary Glory, Dr. Mary Glory brought that compassionate heart and established the hospital and ever since then the same sentiments of love and compassion are shown towards the patients here which is very often absent in many other hospitals and so on. God has given you two lips and with those two lips you can spy, smile at the patients. God has given you a mouth and with this mouth you can talk very kind words to the poor and suffering. God has given you a heart and you can love the poor people and show compassion towards their sufferings. And God has given you two hands. You can bring about healing touch over the patients with your two hands. And God has given you two legs. You can go about in search of the poor and suffering and serve them with love and dedication. That is how, dear friends, love and compassion have greater value than anything else. We have an example in the gospel. A, sri, a woman suffering from so, uh, disease. She spent all her money on doctors, on medicines, several kinds of treatments, but nothing worked. Finally, the powerful, compassionate heart of Jesus touched her and healed her and that is what is required more than all the other equipments, more than all the effective medicines and operations and so on. And that is what we witnessed in this hospital. And this hospital is known for serving the poor and uh, underprivileged, chiefly the poor and uh, lower middle class people, whereas the rich people go to corporate hospitals. So I wish the hospital every success May God bless all those who are serving the hospital. And in, in the, on this juncture, I would like to mention one word about His Eminence. Your Eminence, you are the first Cardinal to step in Gun to Guntur. In the history of the rise of Guntur, so far no Cardinal has come. So you are the first one to come and sanctify and bless this hospital. May the Lord bless your evidence and all of you. Thank you. Good morning, Akwaba. It is a great honor to address this August gathering. Why I have been chosen to address this gathering because 
I have been associated with this Catholic hospital since 40 years. My journey started from St. John's Medical College, Bangalore in 1973. Later, I was asked to help St. Joseph's Orthopedic Hospital, Kofidwa, Ghana, in Eastern Region, through World Rehabilitation Fund program in Washington, D.C. This hospital is managed by St. John of God Brothers of Spanish Order. Incidentally, Vatican Pharmacy is being run by Brothers of St. John of God Hospital also. During my stay, even I went to operate cases in remote areas called Afanyan in Togo, 150 kilometers away from Lome. And also, Asaf, Sefi Asafo is a remote corner in Ghana. So we used to operate many orthopedic uh, polio cases and deformities, many, many, much more. Before coming back to India, I had my orthopedic training in Switzerland, Solothon, a Catholic place. I joined St. Joseph's Hospital in 1987 as a consultant. Sister Victorine was administrator. She was aunt of our sister Cletus. There is a great change in the hospital status from maternity to multi-specialty hospital in 1993. This hospital is blessed with two visionary administrators. They are Sister Cletus and Sister Jayashila. Thanks to them. They have modernized this hospital by developing good infrastructure, operation theaters, ICU, dialysis units and laps laparoscopic services before many of the hospitals, what they have started now. In future, we need to develop cardiac and transplant units. Madam, sister, yeah. It is my humble duty to remember blessed memory of great doctors who served this hospital and community at large. They are Sister, Do sister Dr. Mary Glowry, Dr. Lobo, Sister Dr. Rosa Basani, Dr. Kham Prasad. We have very good senior consultants working in this hospital and helping people. I stand here in front of you on behalf of our province animation team, Sister Mercy, Shanta Kuchmeri, and on my behalf. And considering this as an honor to be part of this triumphant celebration. In the presence of this august gathering, I also want to recall and recognize and acknowledge the efforts of Sister Regina Chinnapan, the former provincial superior, Guntur province, and her team, Sister Shaurilu, Sister Victoria, and Sister Chandra, for their supportive understanding accompaniment in completing this initiative. And I'd like to congratulate Sister Cletus, the di directress of St. Joseph's Hospital, for her innumerable efforts in materializing this dream for, of having a separate OPD block for St. Joseph's Hospital. And I also take an opportunity to congratulate Sister Rosie and Sister Jacinta, the local animators of St. Joseph's communities, all the sisters, and the management and staff, all the doctors, nurses, and everyone who is associated with St. Joseph, because every one of you have a part in completion of this accomplishment. And in the vision of St. Joseph's Hospital, one statement attracted me. That is, the mission is to improve the quality of life, affirm the dignity of the individual, and the sacredness of life. Dear friends, in my opinion, if you pour the money, we can get the treatment in any concerned hospitals. But the care, the concern, and the relaxation, and all that is needed for healing of a person comes from a heart that understands the nobility of the healthcare profession. So today, my special prayers for all of you those who are associated with St. Joseph's Hospital is that you may understand the nobility of your profession and your efforts may reflect the care and concern of God Almighty. And people, everyone who enters in this campus may experience tangibly that care and concern and experience the healing at all levels. 
and this is my wish and prayer for each one of you and i wish you good success and abundance of god blessings and thank you for giving this opportunity to me today it's wonderful to be here we ne never expected that his eminence cardinal peter tauxen would be here but he came and blessed this occasion and then it's like transfiguration experience how nice it will be to be here and tents are also built already to stay here with us remain with us your eminence here in guntu guntu town and guntu diocese is blessed today because of your arrival with us and you stayed with us morning until evening for that i thank you so much on behalf of my diocese diocese and diocese and priest and sisters and people and everybody in germany when i was working there i visited one hospital there one patient he told me by looking at my face it's wonderful to live a life healthy life if we are healthy we can enjoy the life he said that patient was a cancer patient he knows that he is going to die soon how true it is one enjoys if he has good health health is wealth say says so many people say like that health is wealth when we don't have health we don't enjoy anything we don't feel to stay on this earth and before constructing this hospital sister greater she came to me requesting for a recommendation letter okay i will give you one recommendation letter because this is the hospital which is going to serve so many people poor people those who are sick those people come here and stay and they want to get healed and then live a happy life that is why i didn't say anything i said okay sister clitus i give you my recommendation letter and that is the thing and then after that she forwarded that letter and then his eminence he was behind this project and then he was uh, helping and moving this project and then today we see our dream fulfilled such a nice building for the poor people those who come here for treatment is built when they look at this building they will be happy they forget their diseases after coming and then go back without treatment such an experience they will have at this uh, hospital i appreciate sister clitus administrator of this house this hospital and then dedicated sisters are there doctors are there but uh, i don't know all their names but they are wonderful doctors i i only want to say that i am here because the gmj sisters were first in ghana yeah, yeah. that's why i'm here i knew i knew the sisters in ghana running hospitals incidentally not in my own diocese in some other diocese they didn't want my diocese they went to some other diocese so in any case it was because of their presence over there that i'm here secondly when i was a student in rome i lived in a college where the people who took up the college were again these sisters so it just looked like i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't I couldn't run away from them. In Ghana in the diocese they were there. I came to Rome to study in the same college they were there. And now and now I come to India to Calcutta. They bring me here to uh how you call it? Eh? Yeah? Gundu to 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 but all of it all of it is to express great appreciation for what you do uh for putting up this institution. The spirit that animates you and all of that. 
As I said, I don't want to, I don't want to do a big speech talking about what healthcare is and talking about those involved in healthcare. I only want to do one thing. This booklet here, this booklet was produced, is produced by our office. And it's a booklet that is meant to guide people who do healthcare in the church. So we call it the new charter for healthcare workers. The principles and the directives that, that help them make tough decisions sometimes, they're all in here. It was pro, uh, originally produced in Italy, but this is an Indian version done in Bangalore. So it should be very easy to get copies of this over here. We presented it in Calcutta at Xavier University uh, the other day. So I'll leave this copy with you. Now, the, the district collector invited, asked me to invite the Pope to visit uh, to this. <laughs> okay, I'll try to do that. But the Pope, knowing that we were coming over here, and knowing that we were coming to inaugurate a hospital, decided to send his own prayerful wishes and sentiments through us. So, as a gesture of the closeness of the Holy Father to this institution, we wish to present you with this card which is the Pope's own commitment to whatever you're doing here, and wish to invite the sister superior administrator, who is the boss. <laughs> so whoever is the boss can come up. <laughs> Secretary. So it reads, the Holy Father, Francis cordially imparts the requested apostolic blessing on the sick, the religious sisters of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and all the healthcare workers of the hospital. On the occasion of the inauguration of Sister Mary Glory, servant of God, outpatient block of St. Joseph General Hospital of Guntur invoking through the intercession of the Virgin Mary an abundance of divine graces given on the 12th of February in the Vatican. And we give this to you as our commitment to. So this is all I wanted to say. All my speech is here. So with the, with the bestowal of this, I just want to congratulate you for your wonderful initiative and wish to commend everything that you do here to God's care for his blessing and for his support. Perfect wishes and God bless.
behalf of the management and staff of St. Joseph's General Hospital and the entire family of JMJ, I am privileged to express our deep sense of gratitude to God and all those who are present here today to witness this memorable event. Today, 12th February 2019, will be engraved in golden letters in the history of St. Joseph's General Hospital. I thank God Almighty for his manifold blessings that are manifested on all the people involved in this project, right from the blessing of its foundation stone and throughout the construction of this beautiful edifice of healing. On this historical event, I express my sincere gratitude to his eminence, Cardinal Peter Turkson, Prefect of Dicastri for the promotion of integral human development, Vatican Rome. Thank you, Your Eminence, for accepting our request and being here today. We are greatly indebted to you for this kind gesture. As St. Peter was mandated by Jesus Christ to strengthen the brother and to feed his sheep, your presence here today has been a source of strength and spiritual nourishment. We could see the unparalleled enthusiasm of everyone here as you unveiled the commemorative plaque and inaugurated this new outpatient block. We believe that God's blessings of deeper love and compassion has mightily come down on this abode of healing and on all of us. Once again, I thank your remnants for your blessings and benediction. Thank you, your remnants. We prefer our profound gratitude to our dear Bishop, Most Reverend Bhagyaya Chinnabhatini, Bishop of Guntur. Ever since it was known about His Eminence's made visit to Guntur, Your Grace has not spared any effort to ensure the success of this program, has personally followed every detail of the preparations whenever we approached you. Today, in a special way, we thank you for your prayers and may your apostolic blessings invigorate and strengthen our healing mission. Thank you, my Lord. We acknowledge and appreciate the graceful presence of our Bishop Most Reverend Dr. Gali Bali, Apostolic Administrator of Kadapa, and Bishop Emrutus of Guntur. Thank you, Your Lordship, for your keen interest and in bringing down God's blessings on this new building. Your availability and consistent support to the entire family of JMJ will be always remembered. Thank you, my Lord.
Celebrating the day, worshiping God today, glorify Him on this day. Wonderful, beautiful is this day. Celebrating the day, worshiping God today. Glorifying on this day, wonderful, beautiful is this day. Father Matthias Hope, big great hope. Father Matthias Hope, Father Matthias Hope, Father Matthias Hope, Father Matthias Society bloomed and blossomed and fallen. One thousand eight hundred and twenty-two. Change society bloomed and blossomed and fallen. One thousand eight hundred and twenty-two. 